Well, welcome back. I hope that you now understand how the body works a little bit. There are obviously much more. I mean, people study 12 years to try and understand just a little bit of what happens in the body. And yet we don't. We just need to get an overall picture of what happens. And so the next session is on, a, on another piece of the puzzle. And that is called, you know, the supplements that we need to take. And if we need to take them. And in your workbook, there's a little quote that you can read from Harvard uh, that says, years ago, you know, when we asked people, do you have to supplement? No, everybody would say no. But nowadays, it's, it's, it's not quite the truth anymore, and we'll see why. So I call this the puzzling plethora of pills, powders, and plants. <laughs> because uh, it literally is like an arsenal out there. If you thought there were many drugs on the market, and there are, there are equal as much natural substances or claim to be good or claim to cure all, any of those. And maybe it's happened to you that you um, used something and it didn't work and hence lost faith in all of it, like some people have with unnatural medicine. And uh, this will help you to understand why and what you need to do and what you need to take together. And if so, why do you need to take it? So, let's have a look. Do we actually need to supplement? Well, if you look at the kind of food that we buy these days, and you look at the ingredients list of it, you would think, no, it's, it's probably not needed, because if you look at the, the list of ingredients or the list of uh, nutritional values, it really looks good. And it even says things like recommended daily allowance. It's 100% of the recommended daily allowance. So you mean you will be healthy if you eat this. And some people have seen a little bit more light and says no ways. There are actually some other things that we do need as well. And if we look at those, those are the good plants, um, the fruits and the vegetables and things like that that we need to eat. Maybe that's enough. The, the problem is that, well, many people would say it's too expensive to take vitamins. You know, you get everything from your food. And we can, we can clearly say that no, there are a lot of things that we don't get from our food, and we'll show you why. The other thing it may, they may say to you, it's not been proven safe. You know, oh my goodness, you know, you take some vitamins, the moment you put it in a pill, it's, it's not good. If it's in your cabbage, it's good, but the minute you put it in, in a capsule and you buy it off the shelf, oh, I don't know, somebody wants to make money out of you. Um, it's not been proven effective. I mean, it's just a lot of nonsense. I mean, why would you spend thousands of rands on taking little pills every day and you know, swallow them? And uh, it's just a waste of money, really. And it's not effective. Um, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't work as fast as a drug because some of those things you can actually use as a remedy, not just as a daily supplement. So, and, and for other people, it truly, and rightfully so, is extremely confusing. It's puzzling. So what we want to do is, is try and put a few of those puzzle pieces of what you should take on a daily basis, put those together for you. And uh, some other people would say it's just expensive urine. Now, there are very interesting studies, um, if you look in the past, on people that had expensive urine and lived for a long time and people that had cheap urine and didn't live so long. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see that. Why do we need to supplement them? Well, you see, the thing is, in South Africa, if you listen to the news, the other day I heard that um, South Africa is the most leading country in the world with planting genetically modified food. We're bigger than India. So when we genetically modify the food, we change it. Uh, we believe, basically, God didn't do a good job. Uh, we can do it better. Basically, that's it. Uh, modern cooking methods. Uh, there are various of those. I mean, we have, we can buy organic food, and then we put them in the microwave oven, and we radiate it to death. Organic food. Five seconds, you know, in there is just totally, the nutrient value just disappears. Or we overcook it completely, or we fry it and all those kind of things. Then we have the commercial agriculture. They only put three things, N, P, and K, back into the soil. And that makes for good flowers or good fruits, good leaves. What would be leaves? Spinach and lettuce and those things. And roots, like carrots. And so you put N, P, K back into the soil and you're fine. Because it's the cheapest way out to get the crop, to sell it to the market. The people fill their stomachs, but their cells stay empty. 
And that is a big problem that we have. So also because we don't put stuff back into the soil and it's not a closed ecosystem, we deplete the soil. Who of you knows that, you know, if you take water out the bucket completely or con continuously, the bucket eventually empties and there's nothing in it. But if you believe what, what's told to you, you'll believe that the bucket is still full. And it's exactly that. The soils are depleted these days. So because the soils are depleted, you know, we need to add some stuff. We have polluted water. With all the women being on birth control pills, we have all those hormones going into the water. We have other pollutants and contaminants. I mean, listen to the news and you'll see it every day. They have to up the chlorine levels to kill all the bugs in the water. That's not good for you. And a whole bunch of other things. So there's lots of pollutants. So our body is un under constant attack. And because it's under constant attack, it needs to fight for all it's worth. And sometimes our bodies lose the battle. And so uh, we have pesticides and herbicides that they spray on the wonderful fruit that we have. Even if it looks good, it's sprayed with it. So, you remember the earlier picture that we showed you of the body is a terrain and that we have the enzymes and they look at the DNA and they build us. And if this is, is uh, not good in the back or in the bottom in our soil, then it's not good. So we need to take those out and we need to put the good nutrients in. And then everything comes back to normal. And then what we see is we get a healthy, well-balanced, cleansed, nourished and balanced body. And that's what we're after. Now, this session is specifically on the nourishment of the cells of the body. But there are different categories. I mean, if you look at this, and this is just like a handful of some of the supplements that we have. I mean, there is thousands and thousands and thousands of different things. Some are duplicated. Some are just the same thing in a different bottle. But there are literally thousands out there. So I'll try to just categorize them for you so you can see a little bit clearer what it is. And the first category we have is we all think of a vitamin. And a vitamin is a, is a substance, a chemical compound that is needed in the body to make it work. Very simple. We have different kinds. We have vitamin A. Those are usually the ones that you should find in carrots. Those are the retinols. That's, you heard people say grandma said, no, it was true in grandma's day. may not be true when you buy your carrots from your uh, grocery store, you know, where it's been sitting for two or three or five weeks. But those were the good things good for night vision, vitamin A. It's good for the skin as well. Um, then we have the, the range of B vitamins. There's so many of them. B1 is good for the brain function, for the digestion. B2, riboflavin. It's very good for the red blood cells, which you saw on the screen. And then we have niacin. This is a very interesting one. Um, there is a, um, a dear lady that, that helps me in the shop, and uh, I went to her brother. She's a de he's a dentist. And uh, I was in the chair, you know, and he was working on my teeth, and I get this phone call from the office and say, I have a problem. Now, uh, uh, you know, you're at the dentist, you can't speak, you can hardly shake your head. And she had taken a, a vitamin B3 <coughs> tablet, 100 milligrams, which is very little. And the actual vitamin B3, which is called nicotinic acid, it's not the same stuff you smoke, nicotinic acid. If you take that, if, you've, if you're a man and you've never experienced a hot flush, if you want to experience a hot flush, take one of those. It works like this. If you take it, um, you take it now, half an hour later, you'll come out in a, in a power surge like a woman usually get in a menopause. You will have that for half an hour and then it'll cease. And there's absolutely nothing dangerous about it. It's just fun. Uh, <laughs> except when somebody phones you and you're in the dentist chair because she had taken one of these, nothing happened, you know, and I, I had taken them experimenting and, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting, especially in the winter, it's nice. And, uh, and we took one and she took one of those and she phoned her brother saying, quickly ask Christo, am I going to die? Because he's on, you know, I've taken this capsule and this is what happened. I've got this flush. And I said, calm down, calm down. It'll disappear in 28 minutes. And it did. No harm done. But the amazing thing about it is that B3 is something that opens the arteries. It brings down the cholesterol. It can actually save your life. Some vitamin companies took it off the market because of cholesterol medication because it's a direct competitor few cents, costs a few cents, literally. 
No side effect whatsoever. But you do get ones that uh, you get uh, niacinamide and things like that in the, uh, you know, in your, in, your, uh, in your multivitamin. If you look, you get that. But you also get various different ones. Um, like uh, there's, there's forms that give you the same effect. The niacinamide, for instance, won't give you that effect of the cholesterol lowering and the blood pressure lowering that the nicotinic acid does. But you get flush-free ones that are as effective. So, vitamin B5, this is called the stress vitamin. Um, you'll see one of these vitamins here, it's, it's said uh, a high 5 multivitamin. Why is that a high 5 multivitamin? But specifically for stress because it helps tremendously for stress. But we've also had some interesting things. If you take um, pantothenic acid, which is B5, um, a certain amount of that, let's say 1,000 milligrams with 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C, your asthma disappears. No harm done. Okay. Do you need to take it for a long time? You may have to. But I mean, you know, it's better than... Okay, so that's for stress. B6, if you're a woman and you've ever taken a, 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 any woman formula, it's always got B6 in it. Why? Because it's great for PMS and PMT and for all the hormonal problems. It's great for mind control. Guess what? You lose your mind then. You need to have a little bit of B6. Um, the B7 is the biotin. If you have nails that are breaking or hair breaking, that's a good thing. You can use the biotin then. Hair and nails. The B9 is folic acid. We usually don't know it by the name of B9. We know it as folic acid. And every gynecologist uh, will tell you, ma'am, when you fall pregnant, please take folic acid. And that's all he'll tell you. The rest obviously doesn't work, you know. But just take folic acid. Why? Because it's been proven that folic acid stops spina bifida. That is when the baby gets born with an open spine. In fact, it was so good that the woman that wasn't on it in the trial, they had to stop the trial because it was unethical to keep on with the trial because the babies were being born. And they said, oh, my goodness, this works and this doesn't work. And we're giving these sugar pills, you know, and they, they, babies are being born with open spines. So let's stop the trial. We, we, we're fine with it. It's, it, it. We know that it works now. So give them all folic acid. So it's a good thing to take folic acid, but it's good for many other things, like you'll see. Um, it's good to bring down your homocysteine, which we'll talk about uh, in, in a later session. B12, very interesting. If you're a vegan, you'll be uh, um, depleted in B12. If you eat red meat, chances are less that you'll uh, be depleted in B12. So B12 is also sometimes difficult to absorb for people, and they get an injection with it. But it shouldn't be. If your body is well balanced, you should be able to absorb it well. It also brings down the homocysteine. And then there's an interesting B vitamin. It's called B17. And you won't see this in any of these products because it's illegal. Oh, you can get illegal vitamins because you know why? This cures cancer. Oh, but it's uh, illegal. Why? I told you earlier how much money is involved in it. So it's called Laetrol. And you can get it in Mexico and other places of the world. Um, but it's amazing stuff. Uh, the other place where you can get it, a little bit of is apricot kernels. So swallow a handful of apricot kernels, and you've got a lot of uh, uh, B17 kind substances in there that'll help cure the cancers. Um, vitamin C probably needs no introduction, other than to say that uh, if you look at your recommended daily allowance, which we'll get to in a minute, it says you need to take 60 milligrams. In fact, um, today I have taken probably... 10 times that amount already because it is the most amazing thing. It helps for runny noses, for fight infections, it fights cancer. It is an awesome thing. It helps with allergies, with skin problems. No meat and vitamin C is involved. Uh, the 12, uh, uh, there was a guy that was nominated for two Nobel Prizes and uh, he used huge amount of this, huge amounts. So infections, cancers, correct immune responses, allergies, asthma, all of those. Then we get vitamin D. And if you don't get a lot in the sun, then you may need a little bit more of it. And you actually do need vitamin D with your calcium. If you want to absorb calcium, usually you need vitamin D. So if you live in a part of the world that don't have a lot of sunshine, you would need to extra. In fact, in South Africa, we also need a bit extra. And there are various kinds of it. You'll see various cassiferols. Um, the thing is that uh, we need all of it. We don't just need one. 
It's good for bones and teeth. Then we have vitamin E, well known. It's in, it's in the fish oils. It naturally is there as a preservative. But there's a lot of unnatural vitamin E's on the market. Unnatural, not so good. It was made in the laboratory. It's not the original thing. So the original thing is called D-alpha tocopherol. So if you're looking on a bottle and say, oh, vitamin E, and it says anything else but that, don't take it. It's okay if it's mixed in with anything else, but don't take it for the value of what you want from the vitamin E because it's not going to give it to you. It's a good antioxidant. It's good for the heart. If you see people with a tartar buildup on their teeth, it's a good indication that they are vitamin E deficient. Vitamin K, that's something that you can get in some of the foods, but it's usually made in your small intestine. And the reason for that, or the way... We, we need that is to, you remember when I pricked um, his finger, you need a clotting factor in the body and this is why a vitamin K comes in. It's good for clotting, it's made in the intestine by flora. So important, if you take an antibiotic, a chemical one, which kills off all your bacteria in the intestine, you may have a problem with vitamin K. You may have a problem with some of the other B vitamins which are produced and manufactured in the uh, actual intestine. Then there are some less well-known ones, and those are choline, which is good for the brain and for the, service, um, uh, yeah, the central nervous system. Choline and inositol usually goes together. You can find them. It's, uh, inositol is good for calming. Um, the colon in, and inositol usually is a, is a good brain food. It feeds the uh, emission control up there. It's good for your arterial health as well. The other one is uh, PABA. Also a less known one, it prevents suntan. Very interesting, you don't need to put that toxic suntan lotions on. You can take this from the inside and you won't burn. It protects the skin. So it's good for protecting you from skin cancer and things like that. Um, coenzyme Q10, very, 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 very important thing. You know, for the pump that runs continuously, year in, year out, year in, year out, very important for the heart specifically. <coughs> It's also very beneficial for um, allergies, for the cardiovascular health. And if you're on a statin, you know what a statin is? A statin is something that takes the cholesterol down. Okay, so it takes the cholesterol down, but at the expense of your coenzyme Q10 in the body. So it's very important that you extra, take extra um, CoQ10 if you are on statins. There are actually better ways of doing it other than taking the statins, which we'll get to later. Then the minerals. Now, I cannot but even start mentioning the minerals because there are literally hundreds of them. And specifically the trace elements. I'll show you one supplement that we have here. Um, it's called concentrate minerals. And if you look on the back of it, you'll see literally about 50 or 70 of them uh, mentioned. Because you need tiny things. I mean, this is something like some of these I can't even pronounce. Cobalt, copper, antimony, arsenic. Oh, you thought you need arsenic? You need it in trace elements, in trace form, in minute, minute amounts. If you don't take it, one of your enzyme systems in the body could just shut down because it doesn't have arsenic, of all things. And uh, silicon, fluoride. You, fluorides get a lot of bad write-up. But if you take the correct fluoride, not the synthetic one, your body needs it in tiny amounts. And then obviously things like we think of calcium, magnesium, boron, uh, those kind of things, potassium, what we need in the system. But there are, there are at least 72 trace elements, which are the things that I've just mentioned to you. The, the important thing about minerals is, is that it needs to be bioavailable. You know, somebody will come to you and say, this thing is absorbed by the body 99% or 100%. Well, if that was true, you would be dead. Because the path lab, remember Fred's brain, it regulates the amount of minerals or vitamins or whatever that's needed. What you do when you give the body that, you basically give it a buffet. And the body picks, the brain tells it, I need this, 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 and it picks and it makes a mix and suddenly your insulin works or suddenly your bowel works or suddenly, you know, your left eye doesn't con continuously twitch anymore. Those are all mineral things. Okay? So bioavailability is very important. And that is where we get ionic minerals. So ionic minerals are really, really important. Um, 
And ionic minerals you get in something like what I've just shown you, which is uh, concentrate minerals, or we get it in coral calcium, because coral calcium is something that you put in your water, and it floats in your water, and you drink the water from it. And some people say, oh, but it doesn't dissolve. Well, it shouldn't, because uh, an iron is so small, it's in the water, you can't see it in the water. But when you drink it, if you drink clean water, it goes into the system, and your body can absorb it. It doesn't absorb it unless it needs it. So that's uh, elemental versus ionic. So that is ionic. Elemental is basically the cheap stuff that you buy in the, in the supermarkets or in your you know, uh, very, very inexpensive ones. And they are the ones that needs the acid of the stomach to get absorbed. It's a little bit does get absorbed, like 5 to 10%. The rest don't. This, the ionic minerals, are the ones that gets absorbed 90 to 95% by the body when the body needs them. So, so some of the minerals um, I've mentioned to you of what we do actually get. Just interesting, selenium is a, is a very interesting mineral, but it's an antioxidant as well. Manganese, remember I told you the colon can go down. Manganese is one that pulls it back up again, that, that repairs the... Uh, um, ligaments on the inside. Tin, there's a whole bunch of it. Then there's other one that's uh, important to mention that is called silver because silver comes in, uh, if you put it in a colloidal format, it actually fights bacteria, funguses, builds the immune system and so forth. And what they found was the old royalty that had silver um, cutlery, they got sick less often than the people, you know, the peasants because the peasants ate with their hands and with wooden spoons. But, you know, the royalty, they ate with this, a cutlery, and uh, little bits of silver come off every time, you know, you take a bite of your, of your T-bone steak in the palace, and, uh, and you absorb a little bit of it, and so they got less uh, sick. So, that is, but it needs to be in colloidal format. And there are many, many, many more that you can use. And so we need all of those for proper function. Now, um, interesting thing, though, about uh, minerals is if you look at a graph of disease versus minerals, you will see that as the minerals um, decreased, disease increased. So minerals, other than vitamins, some of the vitamins, if you buy a carrot, you can maybe still get a little bit of vitamin A in it or, or uh, beta carotenes. But minerals, if they're not in the soil, you can't get them. They're not there, and you miss them, and you wouldn't know it. You just get cancer. And uh, so it's true that in 1914, one apple contained X amount, and if you were to have in 1997 the same, same amount of nutrients that was in the apple in 1914, you would need, guess how many? You would need, who can quickly count? 26 apples from 1914 to 1997 to have the same amount of nutrients. That's a little problem. Now, 26 apples get sprayed with a lot of pesticides these days. And some of you know that here. But if you spray it with a lot of pesticides, you know, you get pesticides on 26 apples <coughs> instead of pesticide on one apple. So it's even more dangerous. The next thing that we want to look at is antioxidants. You've heard a lot about antioxidants and a uh, very interesting thing. This you've seen earlier, this is a red blood cell, and let's say that this is an oxidant. This is a, something from the motor car fume or from your uh, underarm spray or your lipstick or anything like that. What the, uh, the oxidant does, it, it wants to electrically get equal. And it goes to the cell and it actually chooses a bit out of the cell. Bzz, and it burns the cell. And you're left with a cell that's damaged. And if too much, <coughs> excuse me, if too many cells are damaged, what you would find is, is that uh, you can develop all kinds of diseases. This is the major thing that makes you grow old quicker, because there's so much oxidation happening in the body. So an antioxidant, what is that then? Because that's what we want to talk about. An antioxidant is something that offers its own life to neutralize the oxidant. So it goes to the oxidant, and now it's antioxidized, and it's neutral, and the body excretes that, and the cell is left intact, and you smile. 
So some antioxidants include some of the vitamins, vitamin A, C, and E, proanthocyanidins, those are things in the red grape seed or the skin extracts, minerals, selenium, and zinc. And then there are some well-known herbs called ginkgo biloba, green tea is a very well-known one, garlic is another one, and bilberry, very good for the eyes. All antioxidant because antioxidants work on different kinds of the body, different parts of the body. So you need to have different kinds of antioxidants for different kinds and different places of the body. So it's like if you look at a picket fence, if you, have, if you want to kick a ball through it, and there's an opening and it, it's very easy to kick a ball through it, or eventually you're going to get it through the, through the hole. But an antioxidant is like that. You need a whole bunch of antioxidants, a various, a big range of it. You don't just need vitamin E and C. You need the stuff that is in green tea, the stuff that is in ginkgo biloba, what is in selenium, zinc, and so forth, proanthocyanidins, pycnogenols, all of those you need to erect the fence so that you can protect yourself. It's like having a house with a burglar bar on one, one of your windows and say, so I won't be burgled. Well, guess what? You know, he'll choose the one next door and you'll be burgled. It's the same thing with antioxidants. You make sure you get a very wide spectrum of antioxidants. Then we get to things called probiotics. Probiotics are things that uh, help you to get the toilet works working. That is for the uh, large intestine that we saw. And those usually you will find is called acidophilus. We have another one here called SBO, which is soil-based organisms, which are really good um, to prevent uh, diarrhea or when you have diarrhea, you know, stop it very quickly. Acidophilus does it. Acidophilus has various strands. I mean, you get Acidophilus thermophilus, Streptococcus thermophilus, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, infantis for the little babies when they're born. Very important, though, is if a baby gets born via C-section, it comes out where it shouldn't come out. Okay? If it's born vaginally and the baby comes out, it actually gets certain bacteria that lives in the birth canal. And that is the thing that kickstarts the baby's digestion. And if the baby don't get that in, you'll have a baby that's constipated or suffers with allergies and all kinds of things. If you, in that case, have a C-section, you should get a, a bioflora for the little one to take so that you can uh, get his uh, system to work. And usually, you know, if they're born this, you know, they get antibiotics and all things and kills it off. So from the from the birth, it's very important to have the correct bioflora and, and the probiotics. Um, then we have FOS. It's called fructooligosaccharides. That is important that it's the food for your bacteria. So when you get your um, bacteria in your, in, in your supplement, you need to make sure, turn it around and see that it has FOS in it or fructooligosaccharides because that is the food of which it will live. Otherwise, you just send the army down and say, well, Go find food and do your job, by the way. And Napoleon said, you can't do that. You need to send food with the army. So this is what you do. You send food with the army, you send them in, and they proliferate on the inside of the colon, and they do their job the way they're supposed to. And so that is what, uh, what uh, SBOs are as well. SBOs are wonderful things. Uh, it's a different strand of, or different bunch of strands of acidophilus, and it helps you to create a, a good bell on the inside, or a healthy bell. Then we have fiber, and this here is psyllium husks. And psyllium husks has basically no nutritional value. In fact, um, if you look at it, there is no nutritional value because it's just the husks. Why would we then take a nothing? Well, this is to bulk up in our high protein and highly refined diets these days. We can take the fiber, we take a teaspoon of it in a large glass of water, not a small glass of water like this, but you put it in, don't think when you put it in, just do it. Because if you think too long, it becomes like gel. And that's exactly what happens on the inside of your stomach, or on the inside of your colon. We want that to happen. Because remember I said to you that on the inside, the uh, nutrients, uh, or the, the food rest move around, move around this way, that way. And this is like a brush on the inside. Those little villi that you saw on the, on the screen earlier, that is what it brushes on the inside. And it brushes, brushes both ways, and then 
helps it to uh, um, clean out the system. Linseed is another one that helps a lot, and some of you are taking that probably, and uh, I have actually brought some along. This is linseed, and linseed or flaxseed is the same thing, but linseed is something that helps if you grind this and put it over your cereal or whatever you take with water. It also really helps a lot to get the bowel moving because you want enough fiber inside there because it can be very dark inside the colon and you don't want it to be dark. Then we have other things called digestive enzymes. What are those? Remember when the food comes into the small intestine, all kinds of things are secreted by the pancreas. And those are digestive enzymes. So the digestive enzymes, sometimes people struggle with that because their body has been abused so much. So you need to take extra digestive enzymes. It's important to take a balanced one. Some of those could be, of those enzymes could be amylase, lipase, what lipase, lipids, fat, it'll digest fat, cellulase for plant material, uh, maltase, uh, lactase for milk, uh, protease for proteins and then you need to have the other balancing enzymes with it to make it work. So digestive enzymes are really really important to take sometimes, especially if you have allergies or if you're prone to indigestion, it works, it works wonderful. So the probiotics are needed for good colon health. What is unhealthy colon? Those are things called constipation, irritable bowel syndrome. I get so many people come say, oh my doctor said I've got IBS irritable bowel, my bowel is irritated and uh, it's to do with the food that you eat. Colitis is when you have colonitis, colon infection, colon inflammation. Helps for those and for Crohn's disease. Something that's really important is the essential fatty acids. Essential means that your body cannot make it. Remember I said vitamin K for instance, your body can make it because it gets done in the small intestine. Vitamin K uh, can be made, omega-3 and omega-6 cannot be made in the body. Omega-9 can be made, but omega-3 and 6 doesn't, if you don't get it in this hole, there's no way you can get it. Now, in the depleted diets like we have, very difficult to get it in. Flaxseed or linseed, you get it in oil as well. That's a that's an organic oil, and by the way, I don't know if, if, if you will be able to see this, but on the inside of the bottle, it looks like there's extra stuff floating in there. And on the inside, that is called the lignans. A good flax oil has the lignans on the inside uh, of, of a bottle. And the lignans are parts of the seed that are really beneficial to your health. Really, really beneficial. Um, you also get it, this is well-known ones that we get in South Africa, you can give it to animals, you can give it to, to uh, basically anybody. But that has alpha-linoleic acid, I'll get to it back, back to it in a minute. But basically, flax oil has omega-3, 6 and 9 in it. 9, not essential, but okay, so it sounds really good. And it is very good for a lot of things, flax oil, omega-3, 6 and 9. Then you get uh, omega-6 only, also from plant, and that is evening primrose and all the women with a B6 remember you know you need brain control so you need um, EP, uh, EPO evening primrose oil B6 uh, sorry um, omega-6 and then there's something else called fish oil or omega-3 now fish oil is omega-3 only that would be something like um, fish oil and this is an actual oil or you can get it in capsules or various forms um, there are actually quite a, diff quite, quite a number of, of those on the market that you can, that you can buy. But omega-3 is really important. Then you get something else called squalene. Now if you just feel on your skin um, it, and it's soft, squalene is something that's naturally occurring in your body. It's naturally occurring in the body because it should be there. And, it, and as your body grows older, basically the matrix of the skin starts cracking down like that. And this is a a crease that you'll see on your skin. And if you take um, squalene, various ones, squalene is incidentally very good for fighting cancer as well, but you can spray directly onto your skin. Great for eczema, for acne, and all kinds of things like that. So squalene, wonderful things. Uh, it's a little bit of a fishy smell to it, but that's okay. I mean, you won't have acne. 
So what they do is they put a bit of uh, rose oil in and then you smell like a f rose fish or something like that. <laughs> Rosy. So the difference between flax oil and fish oil, let me quickly explain to you because some of you asked me what's the difference and this is it. Flax oil is alpha linoleic acid. We need gamma linoleic acid, so it needs to be broken down. So what we see is flax oil needs to come down a few stairs to be utilized by the body. Fish oil, on the other hand, is on the right level. It just goes in. So it's much easier for the body to use this, the fish oil, than to use the flax oil. But flax oil has other benefits that the fish oil cannot give you for the skin or for various other things. So very important, uh, Dr. Udo Erasmus, who is a world-renowned uh, a doctor on, on oil specifically reckons that you need to always use flax oil as the base of your oil because it has other things like for instance the lignans that I told you which the the fish oils don't have so good for other things as well incidentally there's people telling you that uh, flax oil is a bad thing to take there are people in this audience that's been healed by flax oil from cancer Dr. Johanna Budwig has cured more people in the world of cancer than most, many, many other people. And uh, she uses a mix of um, flax oil and cottage cheese. And it's called the Budwig diet with various other things. In fact, she says if, you, if you're on your deathbed, she adds champagne, true champagne to it. And she says, you may just turn around. Just never use sugar. If you use sugar, don't go back to her. She'll, she won't see you. Very interesting. So um, that's flax oil, that's not fish oil. So flax oil, amazing stuff. So um, it, it's needed by every cell. It's needed for your cal cardiovascular disease. Omega-3, let me tell you, if your child is ADD and is not taking omega-3, mega dosages of omega-3, your child will never be able to function. No matter what program or whatever you do, unless you put them on, you know, on the feared um, a drug. But what you want to do is give a mega dose of omega-3. They have found that all the children, ADD, ADHD, can't concentrate, adult, child, whoever. If you can't concentrate, you get stressed too easily, take omega-3. With some other B vitamins and amino acids. And uh, many of you are using mindset and we always combine omega-3 with mindset. Mindset is an awesome substance to use for, it helps for a whole bunch of things. Uh, to, it, it doesn't cure anything, remember, you're not allowed to use the cure word. But what it does, it, it gives you the food for your brain with the omega-3, all those together. So then the brain can work. It helps you to sleep. Your hormones function. Your body can build hormones, be that hormones for sexual function, for sleeping, for uh, waking, for hunger, for whatever it is. Um, the body can build the hormones up to a certain point, and at that point it needs essential fatty acids, omega-3 and omega-6. If you don't take it, that's where it stops. You can't make it. Now, we do get a bit of omega-6 in our food because we get it in eggs and meat and so forth. Um, and, uh, but omega-3, hardly ever do we get it. It's anti-inflammatory. That's the amazing thing about omega-3. You can stimulate the body's anti-inflammatory hormones and a frozen shoulder can, can disappear or um, an inflammation in wherever, whichever part of the body. Works wonders for that. So then we have herbs. These are plant materials. Those are things called lavender. I have brought a few here. Buhu is something that, that you all know. It resembles close to what a cat leaves behind on a carpet. It's a very interesting, very uh, distinct taste to it. Uh, yeah. Then there's other herbs, very interesting. This is henna. Henna is for dyeing hair. You don't even take it. And it's so natural, and, and the hairdresser, by the way, will tell you, no way, so it doesn't take grey hair away. Well, look at my wife. There's no grey hair. There's lots of grey hair, but you can't see them. Because the henna actually takes it away, and you mix it with rooibos tea. Wonderful stuff. You can, if you're blonde, you can color your hair with chamomile. Yes. So herbs are just wonderful things. Lavender, cinnamon, basil, thyme, fennel. Fennel is interesting because if you take fennel seeds and you uh, are breastfeeding and you mix that with rooibos tea and maybe with some chamomile flowers, you have a wonderful calming tea. It goes through the breast milk, baby calms down. 
wonderful stuff to use and it actually takes the boring taste of rooibos away. Um, then you can use ginger, garlic, all of those are herbs that you know. There are some unknown ones here that you don't know. But all of those can be used with great success in your body and with safety. Common uses are you get very strong antibiotics. You get olive leaf extract. Olive leaf extract is the most amazing antibiotic. I think I have it, I've brought it in a spray. And you can simply take the spray, spray it in your mouth and it gets absorbed and it's a fantastic antibiotic. Works really, really good. I had a, one of my sons had a tooth abscess once and I put a little bit on the, on a bit of co piece of cotton wool. Next morning, wake up, it's gone. Antifungal, those are tea tree or grapefruit seed extract, wonderful antifungals, relaxants, mood modulators. You get various herbs like maybe you haven't heard of valerian but you've heard of some uh, drug that was made from that valium and valerian is where they got the idea. God had the idea a long way ago. Rhodiola is another anti-stress herb that you can use. Uh, herbs can lower your blood pressure. They can push your blood pressure up. They can lower your cholesterol. The hormones can work, can be balanced if it needs to be balanced. Like with Damiana, Agnes Castus, Mexican wild jam, black cowash, those are herbs usually known to women. But valerian also brings down the, the, the blood pressure. Licorice brings it up again and so forth. So there are, there are things in nature that God put there so we can just use them. Then there's another category and it's called remedies. What are those? Well, if you look at this here, remedies can be anything. But tissue salts, for instance, this is a range of tissue salts. They go from 1 to 12, and then there's a combination of them that you can use as well. That is a remedy. You would, need a, you would use this, for instance, Ferrumfos anti-inflammatory. Your child has a fever, it works well. Then we have other ones that bolster bones. You have uh, Calimur, if it's uh, white mucus coming out of the nose, you give him that. I had one guy, guy come to me and says, I want, excuse me, more of those slime pills. <laughs> and uh, this is what it is. This is the Cali Sulf. Sulf is uh, sulfur, it's uh, yellow, so when the mucus is yellow, you give the Cali Sulf. Now, this is homeopathic remedies, by the way. The tissue salts, they actually fall into a category of their own but that is, uh, that's what it is. Therapeutic, you can get herbals. Like for instance, I have one here called hawthorn berry. In, incidentally, you also get the hawthorn berry in, in the actual herb. And the actual herb is very interesting because it actually, it is a berry. And the berries, the hawthorn, those are really good things to use for the heart. It's also an antioxidant. Great stuff to use, no harm done. You can just cook a tea with this. But the minute you put it in a capsule, oh, be careful. So, those are herbal. Uh, Well-known makes of those on the market is called A. Vogel. Dr. Vogel was a great herbalist of the world, Western world. You get homeopathic remedies. Those are things from Natura, which are those that you see, Walida and Heal. For instance, we have uh, uh, we have Tromil S. This is uh, used by sports people all over the world. And if you use this, awesome. It really works well. I mean, I've personally in our house healed a few broken bones with four boys. You can imagine that's something that you may need. It's anti-inflammatory. It's homeopathic. You can drink the stuff if you want to. Works well if you put it on baby's gums when they're teething. Really good stuff that you can get. So these are... These are um, um, homeopathic remedies. Then you get nutritional remedies. What, what would a remedy for nutrition be? That would be when you have PMS and you take B6. For instance, that's a remedy of using it. Vitamins, amino acids, and so forth. So, how do you choose a supplement? I mean, there's so much. What do I do now? Well, first of all, is there a specific need in your body? Oh, my hair, you know, like falling out. There are all kinds of things that influence it, but start with the need. Why well, I have an ups I only go to the loo once in two weeks. Well, maybe then you need to start with a probiotic. Or what, what else is there in your body? Maybe, you know, you're growing bald. You know, I don't know if there's something that works for that. But fact is... You can actually, if you lose hair, biotin works well for it. So it must be with a need. The second thing, it, it must be as close to the way as God made it. So if you can take this, 
the actual berries, this is very close to the way God made it. Versus when they take the thing, extract it, and triple the strength of it, and so forth, and much goes uh, to waste, and you lose a lot of the stuff when herbs, for instance, are standardized. Standardized is good because you know that you get X amount of, like, say you take hypericum, you take hypericin in every single one you get it, or you get olive leaf extract, and then the olive leaf you have oligo, um, what is it called, Ili oliopren, that's an active ingredient. So if you get, if you get that, um, it's been extracted, it's not as close to the way as God made it, but it's not synthetic. The packaging of it, obviously a glass bottle is way better than a plastic bag. So a plastic bag is not as good as when it's in a glass bottle, why not? Because plastic leaches certain chemicals, especially under heat, or it stands on the shop on the, in, on the shelf and there's sun on it. It leaches chemicals into the substance which you don't want. It also is important to note that you get things called capsules, and the capsule is those two things that fits together like that, and you can actually open it into some juice and give it to a child if you need to, or you get it in a tablet. A tablet can be a problem because a tablet can have fillers and binders and free-flowing agents and all kinds of things that they use to put it in. The other thing is, uh, Ted Aloisio calls it potty pellets, because some tablets come out the other end and they still have the name of the company on it. <laughs> it's called a potty pellet. Tong, 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 tong. So the thing is that with a potty pellet, not so good. Okay, because they stamp it with a machine, you know, that comes down from heaven and goes, Kato! and they, they tell you we've got all this stuff in there, but you can't get it out. <laughs> unless you chew it and it tastes vile. So you get it in powders and elixirs and so forth. So... What dosage should you take? Well, they'll tell you take RDA versus reality. RDA is, uh, stands for, uh, one, one guy wrote a book, he says it stands for rats, drugs, and assumptions. Because there's, we assume that you only need 60 milligrams of vitamin E. Yet, Dr. Line is pointing to 20 grams of vitamin C a day. So, you know, when you, when you put a rat in a cage, it triples its vitamin C production. Humans don't make vitamin C, but animals do. So it triples it immediately. You put more stress under it, it triples it again. So what should we do? Well, when you feel you're falling sick, take more and more and more. Take like a thousand milligrams every hour. How would you know? <gasps> you know, it's going to kill me. Well, you have, well, have one or two things. You'll have a little bit of uh, flatulence. Or you can have a runny stomach. And then just stop it or make it less. That means your body has reached its saturation level. Now, an interesting thing is, just quickly, if you want to see, and I'll, I'll close the name so nobody can see what name it is, but if you have one of these um, and you want to see, if you, have a, if you have a magnifying glass, you can actually see it. But the simplest way is you take B1, and you can see B1 is, a, is a 1.4 milligrams in here. It's 100% of the RDA. B1 in here, if you can find it, it's 25 milligrams. This is double the price of this one. So this one is the better one, right? No, because this one has more than 10 times the amount in of this one. This one is good if you want to prevent scurvy, but it's not good for you to take on a daily basis because there's not much in it. Half an apple has more in it, you know, of those 26 apple ones. So the other thing to look out for is the number of capsules. It's no good that they tell you, oh, we have this much in it, but it says, oh, take 10 capsules a day. Yeah. You know, and there's 30 capsules in it. So you've got to uh, look for those, for those kind of things. So what do you need to take on a daily basis? On a daily basis, you need to take a multivitamin, and make it as complex as you possibly can. You know, it must, it must have very good. Now, I like this one because it has an organic base that it's in. So there are various ones on the market, but there's probably only a handful that are really good ones. Omega-3 you need to take daily. Vitamin C you need to take daily. Ionic minerals you need to take. And you need a wide spectrum antioxidant. And then you also need your glyconutrients. What are those? Well, those are sugars that you're taking. And the sugars that you're taking are very important because what they do is they combine 
all these things that you've been taking for a long time, your vitamins, your minerals. Remember, in your motor car, if you want to, if you want to get into the motor car, turn the key and it starts. There's a number of things that needs to work in there. What are those things? Those things are petrol, electricity, you need to have pistons, you need to have oil. There's, there's hundreds of little, I read the other day that a Boeing 747 has, four, uh, has six million parts in it. Six million parts. Your body is the same. The glyconutrients helps you to connect these different messages in the body. So it's like an interconnection system. It's part. Can you take that only? No. Can you take vitamins only? No. Can you take minerals only? No, it's good to take those. But the more you combine, the more complex and the more complete the picture is, the better. So if we get to this, um, some people will say, look, you've got expensive urine. Your multivitamin is that much. Your super food supplement is that. Medical herbs, fresh produce, aged garlic, uh, and so forth. So it comes to 446 rand a month. Well, on the other side, you might have other expense if you're on. You know, he says he's taking one, two, three, four, five drugs, and it costs him 1,800 a month. So uh, it, it depends how expensive you see vitamins. Is it that expensive or is it that expensive? People say it's too expensive, I cannot take vitamins. Well, listen, it's important that you do take them because if you take them, the system can work. Will some of them be excreted? Yes, absolutely. It's a good thing. If it's all absorbed, you'll die. Because the body regulates what it needs. Take a multivitamin, and on a calm day when you lie by the sea, you'll have orange urine. It'll excrete a lot. But you get up from there, you know, and you're in the traffic, and you drive, and you stress up, immediately the urine goes lighter, because now the body retains more of it, because it needs more to get the brain to work. So, I hope that you will have good supplements and that you will take a complex as possible supplement. There is so much that you can take and we haven't really touched on much of it. But you know what? None of these have a, have a lethal dose 50 percentile value. Some of these you've got to be cautious with. If you're pregnant, for instance, you shouldn't take those. Some of the other ones, it's fine. You can take, even during pregnancy. So I hope that helps you a little bit.